everybody, it's me, Angela Walters from quiltingismytherapy.com and welcome to the next video in the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along Floral Frames. Throughout this video series, we've been learning some of my favorite designs and techniques for handling the borders of our quilts. But in this video, we're gonna move past the borders on our floral frames panel and talk about how we can use different textures and fillers to quilt the beautiful flowers on the panel. We're gonna talk about how you can use echoing to maneuver around the area and how to use different fillers to really make the flowers pop. I'm gonna demonstrate how to quilt it on a sewing machine and a long arm, so let's get to it. When quilting bright, big focal prints like this, you have a couple different options. You can either use the quilting to add some detail by quilting along some of the lines in the design, or you can just use a hint of that inspiration and quilt a big flower design over the flower. And I kind of like both of them, so there's really no wrong answer here. In this particular example, let's use the fabric design and kind of quilt along it to create some detail. For this, I'm just looking for the lines and quilting along them. This is a great time to just relax and let the quilting flow over the design. I'm not overthinking the design. I'm not worrying that I'm hitting all the perfect spots. The great thing about this is when somebody looks at the panel or the quilt, they're gonna see that it's a flower. And so any quilting that we add is gonna add some beautiful texture. It's the quilting by itself doesn't have to stand alone and represent a flower. It's just gonna add that beautiful detail in there. And I can also experiment by adding some more lines. I could add some different fillers. The trick here is just to relax and have fun with it. And since this is meant to look like a watercolor or an abstract flower, the lines don't have to be perfectly straight. They can be kind of wiggly and they can kind of move around. You really don't have to overthink this. The amount of detail that you put in the flower just depends on how dense you want the quilting to be. If you don't want a lot of quilting, just add a couple lines here and there. Or if you want some dense quilting, quilt it till it's dead, kind of like I like to do, add more and more lines. And I'm using this shiny gold thread so that you can really see where I'm quilting. However, if you purchase a coordinating thread collection, go ahead and use a dark blue thread in that area. That's gonna let you have that beautiful texture, quilt that flower without the quilting showing up too much. And like any great abstract work, you really can't judge it when your face is two inches away from it. So once you're done with the flower, step back, look at that beautiful texture and know that it looks great. If following along the line seems like a little too much stress for you or a little too much thinking ahead, you can opt for doing just a big flower design right over the top of it. Even though the lines won't match up perfect, it does follow the inspiration of the fabric and it just looks really nice. To do that, I'm just gonna start in the center of my flower and quilt a tiny little circle. Then I'm gonna start quilting petals that work their way around. And these petals are just little arcs, little tiny arcs that kind of continue working their way around the center. Think of it as one big swirl, but instead of closing the straight line, it's just little arcs that work their way around. I'm not trying to make one row touch the previous row or build off of it, although you could if you want. I'm just trying to keep the petals all a similar size so that I just have that nice texture. And I'm just gonna keep going, working around in rings until I fill in that whole flower. And remember, since it's abstract, it doesn't have to fill up the whole flower perfect. I'm just gonna get it close to the edge and then move on. And then when I'm done, I have a beautiful floral flowery texture that fits the abstract look, but I don't have to worry about quilting along any lines. To add a little more of a custom look to the large flower, you can incorporate some echo lines as well. I'm gonna start with a swirl towards the center of the flower, then I'll quilt the first row of petals. Then I'm gonna echo around the arcs before moving on to the next row. The echo lines help show off the individual rows of petals and makes the flower look so pretty with just a little extra effort. Then I'm gonna repeat those steps, quilting rows of petals and echoing. Thank you. 
Adding subtle detail to the other flowers and leaves is so much fun. Just like I said earlier, the details just hint at the inspiration. They don't have to be perfect. Well, now that we've seen a couple options for quilting the flowers, let's talk about quilting some of the background area, and I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that on the long arm. To give the quilting a more custom look, I'm gonna stitch along the fake seam around the outside and echo the outer frame. While this does take a little more time, I love how it accentuates that frame and helps separate it from the filler. Of course, this step is optional. You could skip this part if you want. I designed the panel so that the leaves and flowers overlap the frames in some places, and I'm gonna use those areas as a way to transition between the echo lines. When I run into another leaf, I can outline them with the quilting to help make them pop. And because I like adding a little detail to the quilting, I'm gonna add just a little spine to the center of the leaf. Then I can quilt along the edge of the design to resume my echoing. Traveling around the leaves allows me to easily move from one section to the next, but you could tie off and start a new line of quilting or just quilt the echo lines right over the top of the leaves. Either one is fine. I'm quilting the echo lines, so it's about half an inch or so away from the frame, but you can make the spacing more or less depending on your preferences. I'm essentially using the leaves to easily quilt the echo lines in sections, but I don't have to travel around all the leaves. Sometimes I'll quilt just right over the top of them. Now I could echo my way around the whole frame, then come back to fill it in, but since I'm quilting this on my long arm, I'm gonna echo the top half of the framed area and then fill it in the rest of the area before moving on to the bottom. I'm gonna echo around the leaves and flowers to help separate them from the rest of the quilting, and then I'll fill in the area with different designs to add some interest and detail to this area. Now I'm using a dark thread so you can really see the quilting, but for the best quilting texture, pick a thread color that matches the background fabric. If you purchase the coordinating thread collection, use the linen or pale mist thread in this area. And as I echo around the details in the fabric, I'm gonna be left with some irregularly shaped areas. To fill those in, I'm gonna add more echo lines or smaller quilting designs. The most important thing is that all the gaps are filled in. I love using a lot of different quilting designs because it helps prevent me from getting bored, but you can use just a single design if that's easier. Like I said, it really doesn't matter what you put in this area as long as it's all filled in. And I also love using traveling and echo lines to help me maneuver my way through the area. And if I happen to have a little more room, I love to incorporate bigger elements into the background quilting, such as feathers and swirl chains. It may look a little over the top, but I promise if I were using a blending thread color, all you would see is the texture of the quilting with just a little hint of the different designs. For an easier option, you can leave out the echo lines and all the different designs and just fill in the area around the flowers with an all over design. Then once the area is filled in, I'm gonna move on to the next section and continue filling in the area with details and other designs to give it a beautiful texture.
All right, now it's your turn. If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel I designed for the challenge, quilt the flowers and the areas highlighted in red with the designs of your choice. You can make it as simple as you want by doing an all over floral design, or you can get more intense and do some thread painting. The choice is up to you. And as always, I've put together free quilting diagrams and tip sheet that will cover some of the content that we talked about in this video. All you have to do is click the link in the description box below or scan the QR code. Well, I'll be back soon with the next video in this challenge. Until then, everybody, happy, happy quilting.